This is Remix Report with your hosts, DJ JD and DJ J Spring. Today's video brought to you by YourDJLogo.com. Get your new DJ logo today. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Remix Report. I'm DJ JD. I'm DJ J Spring, and we have a special guest today. This is long awaited. This is pretty much what our site was about, is people like DJ Q. <laughs> Absolutely. And I can't believe that we haven't had you on We've before. been talking about it for quite a while. I know, and uh, we, we've actually never really talked before. So we, we, before we started the site, we, we never talked, and we didn't really know you too well. We obviously yeah. knew, knew your music and stuff, yeah. but uh, definitely long overdue that we reached out and, uh, and got you on here. So thanks for joining us. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, you guys have an awesome site, and... Uh, I uh, I try to catch as many as the interviews that I, as that I can. So, awesome. yeah. it must be tough with spending all that time in the studio. You know, there's, <laughs> there's probably not a whole lot of time to catch up on Remix Report. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do my best. Well, we, we appreciate it. Um, all right, so let's let's get into this and and ask you how you uh, got into the whole remix game in the first place. When did you start? Uh. What? Uh, probably, I think it was like 2001 that I started remixing. And I I got into remixing to basically still play dance music uh, at the residency I was at. Which, uh, well, it's kind of weird because the, the place that I've been at forever, Blowfish, like it started off as a, a deep house residency, but we always played everything. But... I mean, the what the sound was at, at the time was hip hop. So to really try and like bring a crowd in and um, just expose them to dance music, that's where I really just started like jumping into remixing and like um, just remixing just the gauntlet of anything that I was digging or um, just classics that I would randomly hear that um, I would want to play out. But there really wasn't like a dance equivalent um, to some of the tracks, so that's pretty much like how I got into it. What was some of the first gear you were using to remix? Uh, I was all in FL Studio, so just like my desktop computer and Fruity Loops. Uh, I went to Ableton when I switched to Serato and bought a Mac, and um, there wasn't any uh, FL Studio support, but I, it's still an awesome program. I mean, a lot of like the top guys are like using it, like Afrojack, uh, Porter Robinson, and all that. So. Um, but yeah, no, just I've always been like software based, so it's always just been a computer, uh, desktop, laptop, and just time basically. So, so yeah. Now, when did you first start putting your stuff out on uh, on the internet? Uh, you know, I think it was around the time that blogs started to get pretty big, uh, and that was the avenue to get your music out. Um, I, I mean, I, I remember a time where I was always on like Hype M and then kind of like your the blogs where you would always find like your gems or whatever. And uh, I started like coming up with a list of just blogs that I kind of saw that um, they were the ones that were breaking tracks. And uh, I just started hitting them with like music. Um, so before, before that, it, it was kind of more of like an inner circle of DJs. And then when I, I observed that, that's when I just started like reach out to blogs and not so much spam them, but just like send them my track. And if they posted it, great. If not, well, you know, they didn't. So So when did uh, you post a lot of stuff on DJ City and everything? When did you link up uh, with those guys? Uh, they reached out. Um, oh, man, I, I can't even remember the year, but uh, they had reached out to me um, and they were, they, you know, showing interest in posting my stuff and that's where I kind of started seeing where um, like DJ promo pools um, that became a really important part of getting your music out there so like DJ City um, direct music club killers um, uh, it started first with DJ City though with them reaching out to me and um, showing interest in posting my tracks so um, yeah it, it that became like a really super powerful tool like even more so than the blog post because um i've always been a big believer in getting your production in the hands of the dj because they're the ones that are playing out on the radio um clubs and that's really what gets your name out there so dead mouse thinks that the djs are all idiots and he hates us yeah uh, 
that's probably another interview in the future. <laughs> were you already I, on? Uh, were you already on DJ City at the time? Like already uh, subscribed and all that, using it as a, a record pool for yourself. That's when I had first heard of DJ City. So I, I really like my my whole um, not so much promo pool, but like my whole uh, I guess concept of like kind of like a pool site was like a Crooklyn Clan crack for DJs at the time. And um, I hadn't heard of, like, DJ City and um, Direct Music. And then I don't think Club Killers was around at that time yet. But um, that's when I started seeing, like, promo pools, like, starting to come up uh, and how important that was. Yeah, I know that was a big uh, big influence in our careers, too, as well, getting on DJ City. And definitely shout out to those guys for supporting us and all the other pools, too. So. Uh, you you were also on uh, RatedH.net for a little while? Was uh, I did that for a little while. Um just selling my my uh, my bootlegs and, and whatnot, uh, but I, I got to a point where um, and, and not to knock you know like Rated H or Crooklyn Clan and all that, but uh, I got to a point where um, I wanted to really try and break into official remixing, and I, I felt like the best way to do that was to release. Uh, I was releasing my remixes you know before that, but then at at one point I was just selling them on Rated H. Um, so for one, to start pushing out music again, and to um, kind of more more of the image of you know this this kid is just putting remixes out, um, he's not selling them, and um, just trying not to get on the negative aspects with the labels. Um, but I you know I, I don't know what the relationship is with you know regarding all that. But you know. A kid at the time, like not really knowing like how I was gonna kind of approach like getting into the remix game um, with official remixes. That I mean, that's what was going through my head at the time. So when did you uh, do your first label remix, and what song was it? Uh, it was the "Till the World Ends" Britney Spears. That was the first official I did, and then after that was uh, "Foster the People" Pumped Up Kicks. You can't play that one anymore, or at least you can't or play it on on this coast. Because I remixed the song, not really paying attention to the lyrics, until a buddy of mine told me what the lyrics were about, and I'm like, oh, I just made like the most depressing song, like super upbeat and catchy. So, <laughs> well, yeah. Foster the People kind of helped with that too. I mean, the the, the lyric is pretty catchy. No. Um, uh, we, we're gonna ask you. Uh, I, I guess one thing I wanted to know is, um, do you listen to like the original song always before yeah. doing a remix? Yeah. Definitely. Um, I, I always try and keep the, uh, I guess what you could say, like the original spirit of the song. Uh, to me, vocals like are a really big thing when you're doing a remix. Um, I know uh, some remixers will just pick and choose pieces, but really the vocals are like are the heart of the song, um, and that that's that that helped me as well because a lot of remixes would just. Um, tease a chorus or a verse and kind of go like left field with a remix which is cool um, but for the the market and like the people that I were trying to bring into a club that know the song based on like complete vocals or just like the, major the majority of the vocals um, yeah I, that's I always make sure I listen to the original um, I'll, I'll even uh, at, at some points when I'm doing a remix I'll, uh, I'll grab the video from um a promo only online and I'll throw in the Ableton and I'll actually produce like with the video as well to kind of go with like the theme of the the video and the song kind of like the complete package you know so awesome. good idea. Yeah. so you really come at this thinking about the club playability of these tracks being able to draw people and keep people on the dance floor when you're playing them and all that kind of stuff yeah definitely and I mean you know I I um I, I have at certain points kind of strayed from that where if, um, you know, a label might tell me if a remix is too hard or if it doesn't work, um, which is fine. But, uh, you know, there, I, I still uh, I'll still try and like hold that vision, but then I won't sacrifice um, being creative with it. So, you know, if it's something that they dig or like maybe I made it too hard and it's something that they can't work with. Well, you know, that's still something that I can push out. And at least for the market, uh, whoever is playing like those type of clubs, then they have something, you know. 
I mean, everyone's doing a remix nowadays, so uh, I don't see an issue with just having kind of like different types of or different styles of like this of of a song. You know, I know it can be overwhelming when you have like a Gautier that had like two hundred remixes. You know, uh, but yeah, at least for you know a couple a, a couple of like the original tracks were like you hear it and you feel like a remix is really what's going to sell the song. Like it might have a good hook or, but something might be off. Um, yeah, just, I've always seen focusing on the original and kind of building off that, like really important. Um, do the labels ever give you instructions at all? Or do they just let you do your thing? For the most uh, part? It, so they'll reference remixes that I've done. Like they'll tell me if they dug, you know, a certain, remix and not so much to like go that route but um i think it's more along the lines of like structure more than anything um i've had a couple where um they like they're they, they're looking for a specific sound like say a you know big progressive or um top 40 remix you know club banger um like an example would be like the christina aguilera your body like i had a I had a guideline or sort of to kind of how I should shape the remix. So, so when you're first starting to develop a remix, uh, like what's the part you start with? You start Drum. with the drums. Yeah. More than anything, I, I've always said that you can have you can have really bad elements in uh, your remix, but if the drums are knocking, like it, it'll 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 sell the track, like. In, da in dance music, like to me, drums have always been like a really big, um, a really big element um, in a club. So yeah, I always start with drums. I would definitely say that's like almost your one of your signatures is just those hard hitting drums. That's one thing I always notice about your, yeah. your remixes. Yeah, that's that's I always yeah I, that's one yeah I always like focus like sometimes way too long, but yeah. <laughs> well, how how long can it take sometimes to, to uh, do the drums? I mean, it can take between 10 minutes to an hour, which an hour to me is like a long time for drums. But like I'll do um, I'll do I'll do layers or I'll try and do custom kicks. And it's usually with like layering that that's where it takes a little bit more time just to kind of make everything fit. So do you have any uh, any tips for uh, young producers out there for getting their drums right? Uh, like. The like so if if you're using sample packs, which are great, um, a lot of I don't think a lot of people really layer their drums, and to me that's how I've always gotten a big sound. Uh, and when I say layer the drums, more importantly, like things like the kick and like a snare, um, you can get like a really big like just uh, awesome like club snare clap sound if you just layer like the the right elements together and like I'll, I'll say it's always hit or miss like it i'll never hear something and be like okay like there's a specific snare i need to go for i'll usually like load up something basic and then from there i'll like play with like different like snare like if i have a snare maybe like throw different type of types of claps on it and like see what i can come up with it's the same thing with a kick it's always uh it's never planned it's just like okay what sort of mix of sounds will get me like something that I really dig and that fits. So, so it's just finding that first sound that you like and then just grabbing random sounds kind of and hoping yeah. that one sticks. Yeah. And that's probably why I, it takes longer um, to kind of find that. But um, I mean, the payoff is really big and like, that's really kind of how you get your, I guess your custom elements that, you know, that identifies you as a producer, you know, with that track. So, and uh, you said you're using Ableton now, is that right? Do you use mostly the the stock Ableton like sampler and things like that, or do you have other uh, programs you're using in conjunction with Ableton? I use a lot of uh, third party stuff, so like the, your Massive, Silent, um, Nexus. Um, I there was one point where I was buying like every synth that i could possibly buy and but those are those four are usually the ones that i always go back to um constantly so yeah um how has your sound changed since 2001 i mean obviously the the times and the sound like a edm has definitely gotten uh 
grimier, I, I guess you could say, since 2001. But how how has your style of remixing changed since then? Uh, I will say it's gotten cleaner. Um, that's kind of, that's one thing I've always strived for is um, getting your 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 mix and like your master down. And once you kind of hit that as a producer, um, you can pretty much do anything. Um, just learning those concepts. But I, I've never tried to. When when I started remixing, I always told myself that I would never pigeonhole uh, myself into a genre. Uh, so I like I'll. I mean, this year, like, I'll play with everything, you know, from... Um, All the notes? Yeah, exactly, like, <laughs> Electro... That's uh, coming handy for me. Uh, doing, like, disco remixes, like, throwbacks, um, big room progressive stuff. I even played with, like, some dubstep um, this year. But, yeah, um, that if anything, it's, it's just that my sound has gotten cleaner and I've learned to kind of make things fit in a track. Is there anything that you regret on some of the older remixes looking back now? Uh, well, that that the that was one of, like that I, I got to a point where I was listening to some of my older remixes. Uh, specifically, that's why I re re remix Blind Melons No Rain. Um, I remixed that track like years years ago, and then this year um, I did a new remix. Uh, but yeah, oh yeah, there's always things that I hear that that now I can. I, now I can identify like, oh, I should have done this instead, or I, I, I should have approached it a different way. Um, but it's also important not to really get caught up on that so much. Um, the blind melon thing was just like a, oh man, like this, like this could be an even more powerful song than what I initially did, and so that's why I did it. But um, whenever I talk to a couple of buddy, uh, buddies of mine that kind of like, like, like F and Danny Boy were. This year he kind of, he got to the point where he he got his sound clean um, and stuff just like really knocks like he wants to go back and like redo all his old stuff and I'm like J just don't get caught up on that just it's better just to go you know forward on new stuff and or because then you're gonna want to remake re, re re remix like your entire back catalog and well yeah. I have a question for you let's say you're a young DJ just starting out. And I'm sure a lot of people will want to hear your answer to this. Let's say you feel like you've gotten to the point where you're pretty good at production and you like your sound, yet you understand that you're not at the top of your game yet and you still have a good amount to learn, but you're still comfortable with your stuff. Do you recommend still putting it out at that point um, and that you can still have benefit from releasing it to DJ City as long as it's relatively playable? Or should you wait till you know you're really, really good before putting your stuff out? I would say releasing it, but releasing it in an avenue like SoundCloud where you get feedback. Feedback is like super important when you're a, a young producer. Um, it, it's it's a lot more than someone telling you it sucks. Like uh, it's it's always good to also um, surround yourself with people who are also producing, but. I know a lot. I've gotten a lot of feedback on SoundCloud, and um, I'm always I'm always looking for the the next thing, and always like it. Like I'll you know I'll hear something, and I want to learn how. Like oh well, how did they make that? And that that's another part that that makes it fun. And yeah, same thing with a young producer. Like you put your track out, you'll have people that'll dig it. You'll have people that might not like it, but for the most part, you'll get that feedback, which is super important. Um, were we just doing an interview with somebody, or I don't know if it was a video I saw, where someone said the best thing to do is to get feedback from people who don't know you, who don't have any reason to tell you something. Was that an interview I that we just did? Maybe Solid Disco said that? Yeah, I think maybe it was Solid Disco. I think that's pretty good advice, too. Oh, definitely. Well, you see, yeah, I surround myself with uh, with with friends who are equally jerks, so we're jerks that's to good. one another. <laughs> So that, that's good advice right there. Yeah, that's kind of like us. If you're going to get friends <laughs> to give you advice, make sure they're... They're, they're jerks. Yeah, make sure yes. they're jerks. <laughs> so what's, uh, what's the favorite remix that you've done or a couple of your favorites that... that uh, you know? This year, uh, the Gautier one caught me by surprise. Uh, that was just... Uh, I The whole idea for doing that remix was the um, the music director at Wild had told me, oh, have you heard this song, which I hadn't heard the song. Uh, and uh, 
he had vaguely like mentioned a remix, but it never really crossed my mind. And uh, I don't know what I was working on another remix like that weekend, and I I got to a uh, uh, I got to a roadblock with that, and I'm like, oh well, let me try doing something with like this, and I came up with that Gautier remix, and then I sent it to Physics, uh, who did the 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 one with the additional vocals and all that and um yeah like i was just like super happy at that how that came out um so that was one of my favorites uh the blind melon one that was also another random that i did that i really enjoyed playing uh same thing with or no uh the speakers remix that i did which was an official um that one i really love playing too and then the example remix uh that one I spent a lot of time on, mainly because there was a mixer to be won. So, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. What, that. One, what about that all one, time? Of all time? Yeah. Uh, Not just this year. Man, I don't. I don't even know. I that really one, like your uh, Kanye Power remix. That's one of my favorite ones. I really like that one. My my wife was just playing my. Uh, old discography mix the other day and i heard that and i was like oh wow i forgot i did this remix that was fun like i that one i specifically went to guitar center i bought a talk box to hook up to my microcorp to do the little talk boxy like no one man should have Wait, all so that that was that you yeah uh, i didn't know that <laughs> yeah so it's awesome uh, Oh um, yeah, I found one of yours from uh, searching the interweb. Uh, it was the Guns N' Roses Paradise City, one. Not Paradise City. I'm sorry. It was uh, November Rain. That that one. So I did that one twice. The first one was when I was just like started learning. Uh, this was actually before FL Studio, uh, where I wanted to get into production and I was trying different things. And so I tried picking up Reason, and I just couldn't get it but I, I did there's an earlier remix of that and then the newer one was the one that i done it did on ableton that's more like trancy with the plucks and stuff i'll have to i'll have to make sure i have the the second version i know one of the newer ones you've done that i've been playing a lot is that feel again uh remix that's a good one oh yeah that one, that one's big. it's a good vocal uh, yeah i'm so definitely no, no i'm definitely into like really like the vocally like progressive -y, like style of music right now like that's really fun to make what uh, how do you choose what song you want to remix i mean obviously you're getting uh some submissions from labels asking to remix specific stuff but how do you choose what song to remix in between all those uh so you're talking about the non-label stuff yeah uh it's random uh really sometimes i'll like during the summer, I was on a big disco kick, so I, I started listening to like old rare disco again, and that's when I, I pushed out a couple of like disco tracks. Caliente. Yeah, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it's always random. Like it might be something I might hear on the radio. Um, I might be just listening to random songs on YouTube. I might be uh, I might be reliving my my high school. Uh, career uh listening to like alternative rock or i mean it, it just it's from anywhere and everywhere so when, I, when you were in high school it was more rock than hip-hop yeah i was i was really into rock i like the i heard the preview for the snoop dogg remix when is that one coming out uh i'm gonna release that probably first week of january yeah awesome um so is there anything else that we can look forward to besides besides the Snoop? Uh, I'm pretty much going to aim at pushing out a lot of, a lot more original music. Uh, the remixing has been great, but I kind of feel like at this point to get my name out there more in the EDM world, so outside of like, you know, top 3 remixes and all that, um, original music is really where it's at. Um, so yeah, that's kind of, that's going to be my focus for the new year. And I, I have some, some things that I do want to release that I made earlier this year, um, probably in January that I want to push out. So are there any plans to remove the DJ from your name? Oh man, that, uh. <laughs> uh, so when we, we first started rebranding, uh, my, my logo, 
uh, that was one of the things my manager had recommended removing the DJ. Um, I I don't know. I so I, I'm at this point where there's a bunch of other DJQs, and not not and not to hate on those guys. I just never realized how common of a name it was. Um, so it, it makes it kind of difficult to uh, even though like my brand is like the first thing out there. That's kind of one thing I was thinking about doing is like removing the DJ or I, I don't even know what, but it, it has crossed my mind more so now um, than before. Or you could just use the government. The government? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've seen a few people make that switch. Um, I mean, I, I'm not, I, I haven't really bought into all the hype about uh, removing the DJ or, or that stuff. I was just curious if you, if you thought of that. Yeah. I, I don't know if it, it Suppo it's supposed to cement yourself as a producer more so uh, as a producer and performance artist versus just the J. Well, I, I think it's just because uh, people see everyone who's making big bucks in the game and none of them have the wor word DJ before their name. I think that's probably part yes. of it. <laughs> see, my, my name just doesn't make sense without the DJ in front of it, so I think I'm going to have to keep it. There you probably, go. I'm probably keeping it too. Um, so is the is the new rebranding uh, with the the cat in the logo? Well, yeah, that was uh, it. Was just the uh, the logo itself, and then my wife just drew the cat because I randomly found a cat uh, with a coat on the internet. So you you you'll always see me posting random stuff on Twitter and Facebook. So <laughs> nice. How many remixes have you done with the word "kiss" in the title? I have an uh, idea. Because uh, I looked it up on, uh, I, I I know this is a little weird to say, but I typed in on my uh, to find your uh, not Miley Cyrus to find the Carla Rae Jepsen. I type in Q Kiss, which isn't as bad as when I type in uh, Sexy Deville to get his <laughs> uh, his sexy and I know it version. But uh, do, do you know how many you have? Uh, kiss the girl, change the way you kiss me. Yeah, there was there was actually three. Okay, I was surprised. I thought that would narrow it down pretty much to one, but there's okay. actually three, just so you know. <laughs> that you have. That I have, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, and uh, did, did you mention the dev one? Uh, no, I didn't. So this there you go. My four, okay. Do you have any idea how many remixes you've actually released? I don't even know. Uh, I have my, and I haven't even updated it. The last time I updated was in 2011, but uh, I have uh, like my entire discography online on my website and yeah i don't i don't even know like it's crazy i typed in q and dj city and my computer just blew up yeah no i'll send you guys a there's a I, i've tweeted it out a couple of times it's it's everything that i posted from like the beginning i even have like a couple of tracks there that like weren't done but um it was just uh one day i just like typed in everything in serato and i just clicked and dragged it to my ftp server and like there's so much stuff that I would, it's like, wow, I didn't even realize I had that much. Like how, how many hours a week do you spend uh, working on remixes? Uh, so I devote weekends to remixes. Uh, so if anything, like I might say like a fr on Friday night, uh, I'll prep stuff. So I'll knock out like say drums. Uh, I, I mean, I one time I've maybe had like three remixes I've had to knock out on a weekend. So I might I might just do drums like say on a Friday and then Saturday I'll actually like work on all the remixes and then I'll play it out that night and then Sunday I'll do tweaks and then that's it that's final. Usually like we'll get uh, I'll get remixes uh, from labels uh, like say on like a like that that week so like say like a Tuesday or Wednesday and then I'll turn it around by like that Monday. How long do they give you? Do they usually give you a deadline? That's usually the deadline. It's like a weekend, if oh, not really? weeks. Yeah. Wow. And I and I also do it like for uh, my own sake because then it it makes you look good in the sense of like you're able to turn around stuff, especially if um if it's if it's a remix that's on spec, which means uh they're uh they're basically reaching out to a a, a handful of remixers. But everyone's remix um, isn't going to be picked, so uh, to kind of get it into their hands first, so they can hear it, is really important. So, so labels will do that sometimes. I saw a little conversation you had on Twitter. I think it was with uh, Smash Mode, 
um, Scene Kings, and I think Riddler chimed in. I, I believe you were in there too. They were talking about uh, submitting uh, a remix yeah. to the label. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's, and I, 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 there's things that labels do that I don't understand and confuse me. I, I, I say that as like, you know, I, I don't know these guys personally, but you know, on a production level, and I'm sure if I met them, like we would all get along. But like, wait, hold, was, hold on one sec. Could you, could you actually just start that question over where you said. Uh, there's stuff that labels do that confuse me. That that part just got a little glitchy real quick, so we'll just cut that part out. Okay. Um, there's stuff that labels do that confuse me. And um, if you hear all the Kelly Clarkson remixes, they're really good. But uh, it, it's crazy to me that these guys didn't get theirs accepted as well. And, you know, I respect them all as producers. I mean, just because I haven't met them in person, I'm sure they're, like, awesome guys. Um, but, yeah, like, just to hear... Uh, it, I guess that was the closest where it's it was a group of producers that I've actually you know have conversed or talked to on Twitter and at least have like a relationship in that sense where um, you know we've chatted like that and it's like oh wait what you didn't get accepted too um, but yeah that that ha that actually happens a lot where uh, on s I've done a lot of spec remixes that aren't out and they probably won't be out. I mean, I'll play them, but uh, when I then a couple of months or a month or two or a couple of weeks later, when they actually push out the remixes for that single, and I hear the remixes, like it, I don't get it. Like it, it's one thing to hear something that oh, okay, I, I understand why they went with those remixes, but when you kind of hear your stuff and like and and it's more that you believe in like the quality that you you put out and you know it would do well and there are, there have been times where i've released it um because i can uh other times i can't but uh, when you believe in the quality of the stuff that you put out and you hear kind of like what was accepted in the sense of like what were you you're up against like it, it's just it's kind of mind-blowing to me i i know there's politics involved with that but i mean yeah that was kind of like uh the first, well, well, what, uh, like, I guess my first shock in, like, doing remix work. Because there was at one point where, like, everything that I was doing was getting accepted. And, uh, it, well, it wasn't spec. And when I started doing spec stuff, that's where I was like, oh, wow. So this is this is part of, I guess, the game, you know? So you're saying that there, there's some times where a label will have you do the spec ones and you'll submit it. They don't use it and you're still not allowed to put it out on your own? Yeah. Okay, I didn't. I didn't realize. What's didn't realize the that. What's the ratio to that to them allowing uh, you to? Let's see. Maybe out of the st uh, out of the spec, I've probably done like maybe fifteen spec remixes, and maybe like I put out five. I put out one, and it got taken down. Or actually, no, it wasn't. That one wasn't even spec. That one was an actual. Uh, that one was an actual remix, but they didn't accept it, which was and that was the that was the Toby Keith. Red Solo Cup, mm. and I put it on. I even put it on SoundCloud, and I put it on Box. And that was the first time that I got a copyright notice from Box, which tells me they were really serious and not having me put that out. Um, well, still on DJ City. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, uh, I think we've uh, covered. Pretty much everything. Um, Good amount of stuff, definitely. We're definitely glad we finally had you on here. Like, like we said, long overdue to have you oh, on. Oh, thank you guys for having me. I mean, you guys are doing uh, awesome service to DJs with uh, Remix Report, so well, thank you. We wouldn't be able thank to do you. it if we didn't have people like you coming on our, our site. And uh, I'm sure a lot of, uh, especially young producers uh, who are definitely familiar with your name are going to learn a lot from this. Um so very glad we could have you on here. Um, links that you want us to... Uh, sure. Uh, DJQ.net, uh, my SoundCloud, soundcloud.com slash DJQ, uh, D-E-E-J-A-Y-K-U-E. And then uh, my Facebook, facebook.com slash It's Q. So, awesome. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, make sure you go check that out. Download the stuff. 
and uh Snoop yeah. Dogg remix coming out soon. Definitely. Uh that I was glad at uh the response and that was also another that was also another fluke that just like magically like worked together. So so yeah, that will be out. And your latest original production that I just saw. Oh. The other day. Oh wait, you just dropped out. What was that? No, I, I said uh what was the name of your latest original song that you just put out? Back to you. Back to you. Okay. So that that's that one's out right now. Yeah, you can get that on my SoundCloud right now. Awesome, awesome. So go check it out and check back on the Weekend Weapons soon for more from DJQ. I'm sure. Well, thank you guys. I appreciate uh, you having me on. Anytime, man. Thank you. Thanks. Better. Remixreport.com.